no country which has gotten its independence after World War II has come as far and as fast as Israel. And therefore, that gives me confidence that the challenges I'm about to mention, which are a summary of a long paper I did for this conference, that Israel and the Jewish people can surmount them. The first is the dramatic shift of economic power from Israel's traditional allies in the United States and Europe to the East. 45% of the world's gross domestic product, 40% of the exports in the world, and 65% of all the foreign exchange is held by the countries in the developing world and in the East, not in the United States. We're the largest debtor now in the world. And therefore, there is a dramatic shift. China will be in less than 20 years the largest economy in the world, and by mid-century will be six times the size of the U.S. economy. How does Israel adapt? Israel has already begun to do so. Not by abandoning the United States, but by recognizing that in a multipolar world it needs to build other alliances as well. And therefore, it has become already, with respect to Russia, the, Russia's largest trading partner in the Middle East. China is now Israel's second largest trading partner next to the United States. Israel has signed major agreements on technology sharing with India and Brazil. It is now developing those relationships in the very countries to which power is shifting. The second trend is the impact of globalization. This, of course, could be a separate treatise, but let me simply say that the breakdown of national boundaries with telecommunications and with financial flows can actually work to Israel's benefit, even as a tiny country, because the great asset that a country will have in a globalized economy is not brawn but brains. It's innovation and creativity, not size. And Israel is a high-tech leader in so many fields with a creative, flexible workforce, highly educated, is very well placed to embed itself in this globalized economy and make itself a valuable contributor as it is already doing. It has more engineers per capita than any country in the world. It invests more in R&D per capita than any country in the world. Its exports are one of the highest per capita than any in the world. And therefore, even in its tiny size, in a globalized world, it can be a key ingredient and will be. It needs, however, to also create a regionalized economy so that it pulls the Palestinian territories and the region. So you don't have a prosperous country on one side of a wall and a poverty-ridden one on the other. 